Hello, hello, welcome. Hello. Let me give a few minutes here. Get everybody in. A few more people who are joining. I'll let you know when we're all clear. All right. We got a couple. You've got two who are sort of hanging, but you probably get started. <laughs> all right. Welcome, welcome. Um, today we have um, our 55th Tutorial Tuesday, um, sponsored by Zen Yarn Garden, of course. And uh, tonight I get to show you um, just a little bit about the baby surprise jacket, which is the all-time most knit um, garment, I think still. I don't know if it still is, but at one point it was, and <laughs> I think it's still just a super popular one. Um, so we get to do that. And Laura is here too. Um, of course, Laura knit this one that I get to show you uh, the sample with. And um, I'll let her like cover a little bit more here too. She gets sure. to give away something. <laughs> yes. So we're going to cover um, the iconic baby surprise jacket. And it oh, was knit by, it was devised by Elizabeth Zimmerman. And actually I pulled, um, I meant to pull this a previous time when we talked about it, but um, the original pattern, well, so the original pattern was sent out as part of a newsy newsletter from Elizabeth Zimmerman. And um, she used to type them up because this is, uh, she was, she started at least in, in the times before email and electronics. And um, this book is called The Opinionated Knitter, and it is a collection of her um, newsletters from 1958 to 1968, and it includes the um, baby surprise jacket pattern in here, and I just wanted to show you real quickly what this looks like. So this is the entire pattern on one page with a little diagram and some helpful hints and some information, but not as much as you would think. There are other versions of this pattern. I will put a link in the chat in just a minute to where you can get it at Schoolhouse Press. So we're gonna cover that this evening. Um, if you have a copy of the pattern, please knit along with us. Otherwise we'll show you, Suzanne's gonna show you some of the basics. We're gonna talk about different ways to do things. Um, Elizabeth Zimmerman is a little sparing with the details because she sort of assumes everybody knows how to knit. Um, so on this one, mm -hmm. there are some directions, but also um, if you're consistent in what you choose to do, um, you don't specifically have to follow the directions. Um, and also, you know, just listen to what we have to tell you, um, because partway through we'll be doing one giveaway for a $25 gift certificate, and um, we'll let you know when that happens so you can open your chat, and um, we'll select some number um, from the, uh, some number of correct answer, um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm going to turn it back to Suzanne, and she'll talk to you a little bit about the one we made and um, what we're going to do tonight. Yes. Um, so the one that we made was with a DK weight yarn um, and two skeins, um, not quite all of the second skein, right, Laura? But um, she did yeah, use about two one and a half. Yeah. But if you saw on the first screen too, um, this actually can fit also. I mean, I think you could, a baby would look good in it, but um, I have a five-year-old um, not my five-year-old, but um, but a friend, uh, and she, the five-year-old fit into it, and she loved it. She didn't want to take it off, um, and because Laura put the buttons uh, just towards the top, it really fit her well. It was just like a cute little, you know, it could button at the top, or she could leave it open, um, and it would just be adorable on a little little so you can really get a lot of mileage out of um these if it fits you know from baby to to five depending on how you um your gauge and everything but um there's a lot like laura mentioned um the pattern is pretty sparse in in its exact directions um it kind of is more like a recipe people say that you're just you're following this recipe instead of row by row directions now there are row by row directions so you can certainly find those um, if you're more comfortable with that but i'm going to try and talk you through um, what's going on and help you feel comfortable with 
you know, um, with what's going on in the pattern, because it is a little bit of a magic going on. Also, she talks about um, increasing, um, and she just says make one, but there's, of course, a million different ways to make one. There's also tons of different casts on. Um, so like Laura mentioned, I think the biggest thing to stress is just pick something and be consistent for the whole time you do the sweater. And then, you know, if you love it, which it's kind of fun. Um, so then try it, try another one and then do a different technique, but be consistent that time with your different techniques. So just don't mix your techniques, just, just pick how you want to do the increases and how you want to do the decreases. Um, and be consistent with that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to switch over to my camera so we can see a little bit more and talk about it. Um, and it I might should take also me a say second. the reason it's called the baby surprise jacket is because as you're knitting it, your fabric looks a little yeah. unlike anything you've seen. It And then sort of at the end, you fold it up a little like origami and presto, you have a baby, a you baby have sweater. a baby sweater. Sorry. So um, oops. Ah. I don't think that's the one you wanted here. <laughs> Which cameras again? Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, and I will while while uh, Suzanne is kind of getting her um, getting her camera there together. I will <laughs> read you. This is a little bit of the introduction when she introduced it. Dear knitter, I call it the surprise jacket because it looks like nothing on earth when you have finished knitting it. Sew up two seams and you find you have the nicest little garter stitch baby sweater you could wish to see, reversible with no side or armhole seams to look ill-fitting or feel uncomfortable. Made in baby wool at six stitches to one inch, it is a fine present for a newborn and will grow with the baby. Same directions and a thicker wool at five stitches to the inch will give the right size for a one-year-old and older. So, so that's this is one Laura of those is. patterns that if you want it to be a little smaller, you can drop the weight of your yarn and your needle size. And if you want it to be a little bit bigger, you can raise the weight of your yarn um, thickness and your needle and make your needle size a little bit bigger. Yes. So, no. so, so okay. Laura's is uh, the DK weight yarn and I think about five stitches per inch. So she did, mm -hmm. this is like the one-year-old to five-year-old <laughs> that um, that's the one. And then because she put the buttons towards the top, um, I think that helps it too. Um, but this is what it looks like when it's done um, after you've done the seaming. So the only seams you need are these two across um, the upper part of the arm. So there's two seams on either side across the upper part of the arm. Um, but this is what it looks like after you get done knitting. I'm just, it's just kind of a pile um, of weirdness. <laughs> um, so let's see, this is this one. I'm gonna try and get my camera a little higher here. If you can see it better. I don't know. Anyway, um, it doesn't look like all that much, but all you do is fold up a couple places, fold it in, and voila, it turns into a little sweater. And so in this one, um, I still need to do a seam across here. Um, and then I, I could be done. Um, what I did is a, for a couple of rows, I used a different color and I just, um, you know, switched to the other color and, and knit two rows. And then I continued with the, the original color and then I finished um, with, with the last, with the color again, just to give it a little bit of interest. Um, there's a lot of books, you can do a lot of variations on, on that. Um, but the interesting thing is that the cast on is actually, so this is like my cast on, it starts here and it goes all the way, the sleeve cuff, this is, so the cast on starts here and it's all these stitches. So you have an awful lot of stitches to cast on all the way across and then down the other sleeve cuff is the cast on. And then I'm going to show you, you're going to place stitch markers um, at, I think it says 36 stitches for the um, baby surprise or the baby one, but you'll place a stitch marker here and here, and you'll do um, decreases to get this corner. So you're going to do decreases for a while. And then at a one point, um, you'll start doing increases. And that's here. It'll give you increases. Um, and then that then then you I'll talk about that after I get there. First, I'm just going to start with the top. So we're going to do cast on and then we're going to do these um, 
these decreases and then I'll go on from there. Um, but you can see there's just, there's a lot of, um, you know, things you can do. Um, one thing is that you will see your cast on. So choose the cast on, you can choose um, any cast on you want, but know that you will see it in the cuffs and then you'll see it across the back here if you don't do anything. Now there's lots of people that would just do a little crochet border and that's perfectly you know, great. Um, or maybe a crochet border around the neck too with um, after you're done. But if you want it to be just you know, done once you've bound off, then, um, then you'll see that. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna go into all the different cast-ons. We have done other cast-ons. So just, just know that that is. In this little sample, I used a long tail cast-on, um, which is pretty stretchy and looks pretty good with um, garter stitch. I don't know what you used. Did you use long tail? Uh, it's Do you long remember? Tail. Yeah. yeah, long tail on this one too. Um, I also really usually like the slip knot cast on for garter stitch because it kind of disappears. It looks nice. Um, if you want it to look like a chain or something, you could do like a crochet cast on. Um, yeah, anything is is good. <laughs> um, so that's what we'll, that's what the pattern starts with you doing is casting on a certain number of stitches. Um, and then it tells you to mark um a, a certain number of stitch so it'll say you know mark the 36th stitch say or whichever stitch it says so what i do is i take um it's very helpful to have a locking stitch marker in this case um some people would actually just like put the stitch marker in that stitch and and i'll show you why what i like to do is put it in front of the stitch that i'm marking so if it tells me to mark the let's count here i'll just say um i'm gonna mark the uh, sixth stitch so i'll count one two three four five um six so i'm gonna put a little marker here right before the sixth stitch and then it's gonna say also mark the I don't know, however many more stitches. And so we'll it's say basically, okay. it's basically the same length in from the other end. So basically right. you're 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 hitting your edges. Um it's the 36 so and the 120. Yeah. And then Once there's there's yeah, there's variations for if you're doing an adult or a baby or toddler even I think there's a child version um but anyway it'll tell you some number of stitches to mark um so I put it in front but what's going to happen is it's gonna we're gonna do a double decrease which means we're gonna decrease three stitches into one and we want to we want the decrease to be on um we want the the stitch that we mark to be the center of our double decrease so that's where it gets a little tricky. It's not just um, it's it's you want this middle stitch to be the center decrease and you want that stitch to be to to be the same. All right. So I'm going to show you one way to do the decrease. Yeah, the problem with marking the single stitch is that you're going to continue to decrease as you move up. So you'll need to right. move your marker every time. Um, right. If you wanted to mark that stitch, you could, then you'll have to take the marker off that stitch, do your double decrease, and then put it back in in the resulting stitch so you can do it again the next time. Right. Um, and you would have to move it up with you every row. Every row. So what I do is um, I knit up to one stitch before the stitch marker, and then I do this little dance where I pretend like I'm knitting these two together. And see how that just switched places with my stitch marker. So now my stitch marker is in front of that stitch. And now I can work all these three stitches together and my stitch marker is still in the correct place. So that's my little trick. Um, and then <clears throat> there's a couple ways you can do it here. The, the pattern usually has you slip um, the first stitch, knit these two together, and then take this slip stitch over the top. And that does a nice, um, a decrease that looks pretty, I don't know, normal in stockinette, stockinette. <laughs> um, and now my stitch marker is still in front of the next stitch. So the next time I get to it, um, I'll, I'll want to do that little dance again to switch my stitch marker so that it will remain um, in front of this, this marked stitch basically. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to show you another way that I like to do decreases on the next corner over here on the next decrease. So well, in the we'll same say, way. Oh, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say in in the in my version of the pattern, it does call for the um, slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over. Um, however, Suzanne's going to show you another cool looking decrease that will give you a slightly different visual look. Yes, yes. So this one, um, I I still pretend like these two are together, but in this case, I I can just um, knit into knit into this stitch. I was saying it wrong, and then I'm going to swing around. Well, I'm just going to let this one come off here and put it back. So um, I I did the little dance to get the marker over here. If you get good at it, you, I, I'll show you another way, but um, you can go into that stitch and go behind these two stitches and then do your yarn over and pull through all three at once. And that um, is not looking right here. What did I do wrong? Okay. Oh, sorry, I completely did that wrong. <laughs> I need to um, knit into two stitches. So I'm going to go into two stitches like this and then behind um, into the one stitch and then pull those through. And what that does is brings the center stitch towards the front. Um, and then that can become like more of a decorative uh, decrease. And I'm going to show on mine, it looks a little sloppy here, but um, you can see on mine, I, I kind of made the decrease uh, pop out by doing that. Um, and that's not the way the pattern is written, but it's certainly an option. Um, the pattern, if say, you do you, the normal did you slip decrease, it? then if you just slip it over, then you get something that looks more like this, where you don't see it as obvious. It turns a corner, obviously, um, but you don't see a pronounced uh, stitch line there. Um, no, you so, are working in garter stitch. So did you slip that when you got to it on the... On the other side, I, I knit it. Yeah, or I, uh, yeah, I slipped it. Pearled it? Did you purl yeah. it or did you slip it? No, I just slipped it. Um, so yeah, so now I'm finishing my work here. Um, you can do edge stitches if you want. Um, you don't really have to. The pattern doesn't have you. So then on the back side on my version, um, I just knit. Oh, no, I didn't slip. I Well, let's see. Because you have to bring the yarn to the front. So now the center stitch is um, the one that's right before the marker. So I, you can, I just purled it, I think. I brought the yarn. I just I purled that stitch. Um, but you don't, if you do it the other way, you don't have to purl, you just knit across. Yeah, I was going to say, in, in some ways, if you're following the pattern and knitting in garter stitch, it doesn't really exactly matter what you do there, because in garter stitch, it's somewhat hidden by the next row, because the right. next row you're going to knit, which is going to place a purl stitch on top of your decrease. So it's just a question of whether you want to keep that decrease diagonal mm -hmm. as something or prominent. Mm -hmm. So if you if you do what I did to make it prominent, then you you can make it stick out. Otherwise, it'll just hide. Um, and if you even if you did what I did, um, let's see. I, I'm going to do it one more time, and then um, and then we'll see what it looks like on the back side. Um, okay, so we get to this marker. So it's it's this stitch that I need to do something with. So I'm going to. Um, do my little dance to switch these two, the position of these two, and then I'm going to turn that one around and knit, knit two together, and then pull that stitch over the top. Okay, so that's one way, or let's see, this way I knit up to, to one before the marker. I thought I used to do it like this, where I went through both but it's a little too, and then I just kind of let my marker pop off and did the stitch. Oh, of course it's, <laughs> it, it will, let me see, let me do it again. 
So we just had a question. The camera is on Suzanne's hands. We have that set up as the speaker view right now. So if you can only see our faces, you might need to change from gallery view to speaker view. Um, the other thing I will tell you is sometimes if your internet is a little bit slow, as mine is, um, it looks a little bit choppy in the live stream of trying to watch her do the stitches. Um, but as soon as the video renders and we share it to um, Facebook or we put it up on YouTube, which will happen later this evening or early tomorrow, um, it will be fine at normal speed and it won't look choppy anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just did it the same as that first way. I switched it first and then and then did my decrease. Um, and then on this round, I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just going to knit across it and we'll see what it looks like. But the biggest thing to remember is that um, you have to, because it's a double decrease, you have to um, pay attention a little bit to what your marker is doing. Okay, so I just knit all those stitches and let's just look at it. So if you just knit them all, I think that it, I think that this way or this way will look about the same. I could do one more if people want to see here. Um, and then we could and then I'll and then I'll show you the, the increases. Oops. See, it, it is nice to have that marker because then if you're just on a roll, at least you hit the marker and you can take out that stitch. <laughs> um, so here I'm switching the places and then I will um, slip this stitch, knit two together, pull this one over. And here again, I'll switch their places. Lose that stitch and then knit two together, go grab the back one here and finish. Turn and then let's see what it looks like. Um, and then we will start doing increases after this. So we get to see those two. Your increases can be done in a lot of different ways too. Um, Again, it's more the consistency that's really going to matter and make it look nice. <laughs> um, all right, so so in this way, it's still it's going to get hidden in the garter stitch. So it's it's easy to do it either way. You can either make it prominent if you want, or you can it'll hide um, that way or this way. I think in this one, you see a little bit of that. Um, a uh, slip stitch that you pull over the top. Um, but again, if you're consistent, it will it'll look good both ways. All right, so the next part um, is we're gonna do increasing. And um, I think, should we pause now? Do you wanna pause, Laura? Or should I keep going with increasing? <laughs> I think you can keep going. Okay, I'll keep going with increasing. Then we'll take questions and stuff um, after yeah. we do a giveaway and... Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more. So, all right, <laughs> um, increasing, there's like you remember, there's a million different ways to increase. Um, you can do it so that like in my increase on this one, since I did the prominent decrease, I kind of wanted there to be a prominent increase. Um, and so I did always um, knit the, the middle stitch and then I increased on either side. And when I was on the reverse, I, I purled it to get this to be um, basically like stockinette for that one stitch. Um, but that's not really what the pattern does. Um, so if you don't want to do that, then don't don't do that. Um, and this one, I think Laura did the, you know, more traditional um, knit <clears throat> and then the like a lifted increase. So I'll show you that. Um, but actually, I'm just going to skip straight to showing you what I think is the easiest <laughs> and uh, the most invisible one. And actually, um, I think I can't remember where, but I think Elizabeth Zimmerman did did mention this one and re recommend it in garter stitch. Um, so mm -hmm. at least that's what I've heard. <laughs> um, so here's knit. We're going to knit up to. So now our stitch marker is in front of. Um, this stitch. So this is like the center stitch. So I'm going to do an increase on either side. 
Um, so here I knit this stitch. Now one way to do it would be to lift this bar and do your um, uh, make one right. Um, or you could knit front and back. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna leave that. Now I'm getting into over the weeds. I'm gonna show you the easiest way. The easiest way is just to do a yarn over. So you do a yarn over, but then on the next row, we're gonna close up the yarn over. So knit um, the yarn over and then slip your stitch marker and then knit the middle stitch and then do another yarn over. Because what we want is um, increases on either side of the of that marked stitch. So again, on this side, I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna do a yarn over, slip my stitch marker, knit one and then another yarn over. And then when we come back, we're going to close up that hole by uh, twisting in the stitch. So instead of just um, instead of just knitting the yarn over, if I just knit that, it would leave like a pretty big hole. But I'm going to knit into the back loop of that yarn over, and it kind of closes it up. Um, slip my stitch marker like normal. Knit into the back. <clears throat> This also keeps like the flow of your um, garter stitch ridges better than other like lifted increases because it's just the yarn that was in that row that's kind of staying there, if that makes sense. Um, all right, so let's look at it again. So once it's all knit up, you, you don't really see um, those holes. I'm gonna do a, another row just so we can assure ourselves that it doesn't look bad or leave giant holes. Um, of course, it would it could look cute to have those holes too. Um, so a uh, yarn over before the marker, slip the marker, knit the next stitch, and then do a yarn over so that we have yarn overs on either side of that marked stitch. Um, yarn over, slip the marker, knit the stitch and then another yarn over. Okay, we're just keeping things symmetric here. And we have to kind of resolve those yarn overs by knitting through the back loop of the yarn over to twist it. The other thing I will say is it's important to keep your markers in the correct place, but if you lose your place, if you um you might consider marking the right side of the garment with a um stitch marker and you you can actually flip it over and see what that center stitch is as you're making your increases and decreases so if you can read your knitting a little bit if the marker gets off or falls on the floor and you're not sure where it went um it, you can sort of read where it should be mhm mm um so here so if we wanted to be really picky <laughs> what I would do is I would do a yarn over um I would do a yarn over on one side and then on the other side I would do like a reverse yarn over um so that it would be like a right and a left increase but in garter stitch it usually doesn't make that much of a difference um overall and you can see it a little bit more on um on this side than you can on the other side. So this is my um, this is my right side, and on the right side, you really it's hard to to tell anything. It just looks like a garter stitch. Um, and uh, here's my my two different increases. So if I were knitting a baby surprise again, <laughs> that's what I would probably do is just the, the yarn over. I might do the um, opposite. I could show that if people are interested. Um, I'll show it if people are interested afterwards. Um, but there's just here, let me gonna switch cameras back. Um, you know, like I said, there's just so many different ways um, to do things, but consistency is key. Um, so without further ado, ado, I will let uh, Laura do a gift certificate and see if there's any uh, questions that that come up. Um, and then I'll I'll talk a little bit more about the, the construction of it. Um, there is technically a right side and a wrong side. So we should cover that next. Yes. Um, yes. Be because if you fold it the wrong way, you'll be able to tell. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so open your chat windows. And my question is, who wrote today's pattern? Ooh. I'm going to pick number three with the correct answer. So let's go one, two, three. Uh, it looks like Sherry Ham. So Sherry, go ahead and message um, Zen Yarn Garden. She's on here and uh, she will get you all set up with your $25 gift card. And you can use that to purchase any of the Diane Wickens colors. I'm going to share my screen just briefly. Um, these were colors that were dyed up um, to honor a local Canadian artist. Um, and this is one of the colorways that we used for um, our uh, sweater. So there are a variety of colorways. I think we've got 12 or 13. There are a couple that are sold out. The colorway that we used is the pink chair. Um, and my screen shows it's sold out, but they are actually dying a little bit more if you're interested in that colorway. Um, and so they're all dyed on DK. I used um, about a skein and a half. You definitely need more than one skein. And what I did is I actually wound up both of my skeins and I alternated them every two rows to try and prevent pooling. There still was a little bit of pooling in the baby surprise jacket, but um, when it pooled, it also pooled in interesting ways. So it wasn't, I, I will say that when you're working in garter stitch and there's so much increasing and decreasing throughout the jacket that um, it's not necessarily like a huge thing, but I went ahead and alternated just so that I didn't have any one section that was really, really um, kind of problematic at all. So um, that is what we've got here. Um, the question about the right side and the wrong side. Yes. All right. So Turn that back to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as you get going, oh, camera, let me switch this camera. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can see it. You can see it from here, too, maybe. Um, this is uh, the original sample. So you can like see the increase line. Um, I mean, she does say it's supposed to be reversible. It will just look a little bit different on each side. Um, there is a section that I so first you'll start out, like I said, across the top, you'll do this decrease line, and then you'll do the increase line, but then you'll start, um, you'll just work straight only on the stitches that are in between your markers. So you'll only work on those stitches for a little ways, and then you'll pick up along the edge. And so that is, I think, when it will most be apparent what your right side and your wrong side, um, because you'll want to pick up your stitches and then keep keep the wrong side um just add, because when you pick up stitches you'll see that little edge there um so your right side will start looking more better at that point <laughs> um and then also there's a part where you uh cast off some stitches to form this neck edge um and and let's see also like on mine I'm going to switch to camera view here if I can get that working again. Sorry, my camera is supposed to be off, but it's not. So you can see a weird view of me. Oh, come on. There we go. OK, so in this version, I did um, use that other yarn. Let's slow. Um, on my wrong side, I guess I could choose if I wanted it to look a little bit more, um, you know, changing up. I could choose this as my right side, but um, I was thinking this would be my right side. So um, once you fold it up, uh, there also is a, a part in the pattern where you just do some increases in the middle of the row, and that um, gets you, one is for fullness of cuff, I think is how she describes it, um, and and you can see how here the cuff is a little bit narrower, and then it gets a tiny bit bigger, um, so that gives you some fullness there. Also, back here, um, at some point, you'll add a, a few more, you'll do increases um, to give it a little bit more in the back somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it is, but um, so those two are um, just randomly or not randomly, evenly spaced throughout your knit. Um, <clears throat> and then in mine, you can see it more here. Maybe I do want this. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter as much what side you pick until you sew it up. Um, and 
this is what's on your needles at the end. Everything like my little purple edge here is uh, what's on your needles. It isn't it flat, of course. So you do kind of need a circular needle, I would think is easier um, than straight needles. But I think you, yeah, you'd probably want a circular needles. But um, because of the increasing and decreasing, you, you'd have to like kind of turn this corner, it would get splayed out. Um, but when I did it, um, I did buttonholes the same on this side. So you have a stitch marker here, so you'll know to evenly space your buttonholes. And for my buttonholes, I just did yarn over, uh, knit two together. So you keep your stitch count the same, um, but it's just I just did a simple yarn over because usually you're going to use uh, small enough buttons that will go through just a yarn over. Um, but I did do them on both sides so that it'll be easier for me when I'm going to knit it or sew it up. Um, I'll just sew buttons over the top of the um, of the buttonholes that are already there. And I might just do the top ones. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like the idea of just the top ones. If you know that ahead of time, um, then you only need to put buttonholes on one side um, of your work. Did you just do a yarn over or yours look a little bit bigger maybe? Um, I just did a yarn over. I was going to say, I think your screen froze because we're not seeing what's on the table in front of you. Oh, no. Okay. Um, like I can see, I can see your face and you are still moving, but your, um, the second camera, it that looks like froze. Um, okay. the other thing that I forgot is one of the most important things. There's a discount code. We forgot yeah. that at the beginning. <laughs> um, shop from now through April 23rd, which is Sunday. Um, and you'll save 25% off the Diane Wickens art colorways, the, the yarn that we use to make this baby surprise jacket, um, with the code spring. So, uh oh, it looks like maybe Suzanne. No, she's still here. here. I'm here. Uh, you're here, but your face isn't here anymore. <laughs> Am I there? Am I back? <laughs> okay. So, two important things we forgot. The first is the discount code. Use the code SPRING. You'll get 25% off your purchase of um, the Diane Wickens colorways. I went ahead and put that link in there. Um, the second thing that I was going to talk about at the end is um, our next tutorial Tuesday. Our next tutorial Tuesday is in two weeks. It's on May 2nd, and it's going to be getting hooked on crochet basics, learning the essential stitches with Mary Beth Temple. So if you have wanted to learn to crochet, um, she is a great teacher and she will be joining us. And again, you always have to register for our tutorial Tuesdays, but they are always 100% free. Um, we just require registration because we don't like publishing the link. We've had a little problem in the past um, with people getting on our Zoom who shouldn't be here. So um, that is the next one. I just put the link to that in the chat. Um, and do we have any final questions? We ordered Sorry. our buttons off of Etsy. Um, they were cute toggle buttons. Uh, on the placement on the buttons, it says space them evenly across the row, but I kind of didn't pay attention to that and did mine at the top. Um, and as Suzanne pointed out, that kind of helps it grow a little bit with um, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the child, because what happens is you can just do a few of the buttons at the top um, and you don't have to, um, you don't have to put them all the way down. The mm -hmm. pattern itself is available in Elizabeth Zimmerman books or um, at Schoolhouse Press. It's available, and I'm adding that right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a free pattern. It's it's like out of copyright because it's it's an older pattern too. Um, but maybe that's not true. I thought that I thought pack. that I read that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's you can find it in a lot of different places. Yeah, um, you can find here's where the um, the baby surprise jacket on Ravelry. Um, the rerun you... will be available on Facebook um, either later this evening or this morning. It will be on Zen Yarn Gardens um, page. Uh, Roxanne usually also sends out an email to everyone who attended with the link, or you can check out our YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube link for all of our tutorial Tuesdays, everything we've done is right here. Sorry, that was another question I got. <laughs> Yay. Yes. 
Sharon has and it looks like Sharon's showing the full um I'm just gonna I'm gonna make your screen big for just a second it looks like Sharon is showing the complete the complete surprise which is baby and adult sizes so um and that's the book that I linked um for $11.99 you get pretty much everything there is to know about baby surprise jackets yeah there's lots of variations once you've made it once you know it'll start to make more sense but it is nice to have somebody that's you know the people that have done it in lots of different and and written those iterations out um and then someone else I was mentioned say, oh go ahead oh I was just going to say that for the buttonholes it it is um at the beginning or the ends of your rows so like I said this is the edge it comes all the way down and then all the way across and all the way back up so at the beginning of the and the the ends of your rows um is where you would evenly space those buttonholes Okay, the one other thing that someone mentioned up thread, I've never, um, I have never been in the group, but I should have thought to look, is there is a baby surprise group on Ravelry. Um, and so if you are able to use Ravelry or you have used Ravelry, um, you may, I, I'm sure people have been there for years and years and years. Um, and so um, they have shared all their tips and different versions. I put a link in the thread. Um, would this be appropriate for a baby boy? Yes, it would be appropriate made it for, for my... any baby. Um, you can switch the buttons to the other side if you wish mm -hmm. um, and just make it in a slightly different colorway. Uh, yes, the, the yellow and pink and gray is a little feminine, um, but there were plenty of other colorways in those Diane Wickens colorways that you could use. Um, and, I've made and several not all for boys. Them. I used like little plain buttons. It was really cute. <laughs> Yeah, I've knit this a number of times. Um, I've knit it in, near the beginning, you mentioned a reference to line by line instructions. Can you repeat that here or provide the reference in the chat? Oh, I yes. thought there was a version of the pattern by Meg Swanson. So there's one from, mine is from Schoolhouse Press. That's yours too, right? The, I think they have ones that just online that pattern you can get. Yes, I, I think um, I think in the book, uh, The Complete Surprise, it, yes, The Complete Surprise um, was published later and it should have line by line instructions. So here's the, um, one more time, here's that. Um, if, if you want line by line instructions, the only thing I wouldn't recommend is this version because this version is literally in her, um, in her words as she wrote it in the very beginning. And that's a, just do this for a little bit and then do this for a little bit and then do this for a little bit. It results in a perfectly serviceable garment, but it does not give you all of the um, hand-holding that you might like while knitting the pattern. Yes. It, it was my introduction to Elizabeth Zimmerman, I think was knitting one of these. Yeah, it's so fun. I think it's just neat how it all comes together. It feels a little bit like magic as you're working on it. And um, well, and, and but what I was going to say is I've up. knit a version in fingering weight, and that's a very newborn size, like mm -hmm. really tiny, doesn't last very long. I've also knit it in my hand spun um, and then in other washable wools. So, mm -hmm. yeah. OK, does anybody well, have I hope you'll dive questions? in and, and enjoy and. <laughs> Yeah, let us know. Well, any final questions? I haven't seen any come up, but maybe I'm frozen yeah, here. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I hope even if you've knit it that you've gained a little something. Um, I know it's a lot to cram in to our sessions, but thank you for joining us and hope to see you next time at the crochet um crochet intro. Um, yeah, that'll be on May 2nd. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Good night.